In this example, we will be designing a simply supported T-beam to span uh, 30 feet um, and support a factored load of four kips per foot. We're going to use uh, F prime C, our concrete strength of 4 KSI, and our yield strength of our steel 60 KSI. Um, and this is going to be an isolated uh, T-beam. So it's uh, going to be independent of any kind of uh, one-way slab or, or two-way slab system. Um, so the first thing that we're going to do is choose the dimensions uh, for our section based on our ACI 318 uh, limits. Uh, first, we'll use our uh, minimum height requirements um, to find the uh, height of our section. Um, so our height needs to be greater than or equal to LN over 16. Um, so we have a 30-foot span times 12 inches per foot divided by 16 uh, gives us a um, minimum height of 22.5 inches. Um, so I'm going to start well above this. Uh, and, and if you wanted to do a design on your own, you could um, start closer to the limit. But I'm going to start with a height of 30 inches. Um, and this is using uh, our rule of thumb where our, our height in inches is about um, equal to our length uh, in feet. So we have a 30 foot span, so I'm going to try a 30 inch depth. Um, so then we can find our D, um, and we're going to need to um, approximate a bar size. So I'm going to use uh, number eights just for simplicity here. So our D will then be equal to our H, 30 inches, minus our cover, interior exposure, one and a half inches, minus the diameter of our stirrups. So I'm going to assume a number four stirrup, uh, 0.5 inches minus uh, one inch diameter of our longitudinal steel. And then we're going to assume that we have our steel in two layers, um, which is common in T-beams. Uh, so we, our D goes to the center of these two layers. Um, so we need to add in half of the space between the layers, uh, which in our case is uh, one inch um, equal to the diameter of our longitudinal bars. Um, so then we'll have our, our D, and we'll find our D to be equal to 26.5 inches. Uh, we'll next need to make some assumptions. So uh, our first assumption is we're going to assume that our uh, BW, our web width, is about equal to 0.5 times our D. So we'll have 0.5 times 26.5 uh, is going to equal 13.3 inches. So I'm going to round down, and I'm going to try using a BW of uh, 12 inches, but you could round up and, and use a, a BW of 14 inches if you wanted as well. Um, but try to keep it at, at least as an integer and, and uh, preferably at, at uh, intervals of two. Um, so then we'll need to make an assumption for our, our flange thickness. Our flange thickness, uh, which we'll call H sub F, should be greater than or equal to half of our web width. So for us, half of our web width is 0.5 times 12 inches is six inches. So we're going to start with a height of our flange equal to uh, six inches. Uh, finally, we need to find the uh, effective flange width. The effective flange width for uh, isolated T-beams um, is less than or equal to four times BW. Uh, so for us, we have uh, 4 times 12 inches is equal to 48 um, inches. And we're just going to set this equal to um, our, our, uh, our flange width. So now we have our uh, section geometry. So we have our, our flange width, our flange depth, our web width, 
and our overall section height. And we, we'll move forward with these, uh, these dimensions in our design. Our next step is to compute our AS required and choose uh, our, the size of our reinforcement and the number of bars that we need. Um, so in this example, we were given uh, our factored distributed load. So we're just going to use that directly into our uh, maximum moment for a simply supported beam e expression, WL squared over 8. Um, so we'll have 4 kips per foot times our length, 30 feet squared, and divide this by 8 to get our uh, MU equal to 450 kip feet. And take this times 12 to find kip inches, so 5,400 kip inches. Um, we're going to assume tension controlled to find our MN required. So 5,400 uh, kip inches divided by 0.9. Uh, since we're assuming tension controlled, we'll need to come back and check this then. Uh, but we'll find our MN required then to be 6,000 kip inches. Uh, we can then use our MN required and we'll use an approximation for our lever arm that we've been using. Uh, so assuming our lever arm is equal to uh, around 0.9 times D, then uh, we can find our AS required is equal to our MN required 6,000 kip inches divided by our FY 60 KSI times 0.9 uh, times our D, 26.5. And this will give us our AS required of 4.2 square inches. So at this point, we can take our 4.2 to some kind of design aid where we can use our knowledge of our uh, bar sizes to uh, uh, approximate and, and decide on uh, the size of bar and the number of bars that we want to use. Um, for this example, I'm going to try uh, using four number nine bars. So this is going to give us an AS of four square inches. Um, so since this is, is design, I can choose a little below my AS required and uh, I'll come back then um, at the end when we're checking our actual flexural capacity to make sure that um, we have a sufficient amount of reinforcement uh, to satisfy our design. Uh, since we are using, um, or we're going to try using number nine bars, and we initially calculated our D using number eight bars, uh, we need to recalculate our D. Um, so our D is equal to our overall height, which is 30 inches, uh, minus our cover, 1.5 inches, minus the diameter of our stirrup, 0.5 inches, uh, minus the diameter of our bar, so 1.128 inches uh, for our um, number nine bars, and then minus uh, half of our space in between, which will be 1.128, the diameter of our number nine bar. And we'll find our new D uh, to be equal to 26.3 inches. So we'll use, uh, we have our AS and our D for moving forward. Uh, before we move forward though, we need to make sure that we have uh, enough steel to satisfy our AS min requirement. Um, so we'll, our AS min is the maximum of these two expressions. Uh, the top expression, 3 square root of 4,000 PSI divided by uh, 60,000 PSI times BW, 12 inches, D, 26.3 inches, and then our, our bottom expression, 200 divided by 60,000 PSI, 12 inches, 26.3 inches. 
So our top expression uh, we have equal to 1.0 inches squared and our bottom expression equal to 1.1 inches squared. So we can see that our uh, AS min is equal to 1.1 square inches. So we can see that our uh, AS provided four square inches is greater than our AS min 1.1. Uh, so we're okay, we meet this requirement. Uh, so we'll next need to determine our A, um, our compression block depth, and make sure that we're still in the top flange. Um, and we also need to check our steel strain. Uh, so to check our, uh, or determine our A, we're gonna use start from equilibrium. So start from our compression equal to our tension. Um, and in order to um, move forward, uh, we'll solve for C. Um, but we first need to solve for our beta one. Uh, so we have four KSI concrete. So we'll have a beta one equal to 0.85. Um, so now we can plug everything into our uh, expression for C. So we'll have four square inches times 60 KSI divided by 0 0.85 times F prime C, 4 KSI times our B, which is 48 inches times our beta 1.85. And we'll get our C to be equal to 1.7 three inches. Uh, so we can then also find our A, and we'll find our A to be 0.85 times 1.73 inches, and we'll get our A to be 1.47 inches. Uh, so we can see that our A is less than the height of our flange which is six inches. So we know that our, our compression block A is still in our top flange. So we're, we're okay here. Um, now we also need to check the strain in our steel. Um, so we'll do this by first finding the distance uh, from the compression fiber to the centroid of our um, bottom most layer of tensioned steel. So we can do this by taking our height which is 30 inches, minus our cover, 1.5 inches, minus the diameter of our stirrup, so we assume number four stirrups, so 0.5 inches, and then minus half the diameter of our longitudinal bars, 1.128 inches. And we'll get a, an overall distance D sub T of 27.4 uh, uh, inches. So then we can plug in and, and determine the strain in, in our, our steel layer. So we'll use similar triangles. So 0 0.003 times 27.4 minus 1.73 divided by 1.73. Uh, and we'll get our epsilon sub t equal to 0 0.04 uh, five. Um, so we're greater than our tension control limit 0 0.005. Uh, so we know we're good. We're tension controlled. Our next step is to find our moment capacity. So to do this, we'll use our, our force times lever arm. So our force ASFY, 4.0 inches squared times FY, 60 KSI, uh, times our D, which is 26.3 inches, minus our A over to 1.47 inches divided by two and we'll find our MN equal to 6,154 uh, kip inches. 
Uh, so then we can find our phi mn. So we found our section is tension controlled, so 0.9 uh, times 6,154. Uh, and we'll find this equal to 5,538. And we can compare this uh, to our M sub U, which is 5,400. So we see that our phi MN is greater than uh, MU. So we're okay. Our uh, section has sufficient capacity. Finally, we need to conduct our detailing checks. So uh, we're going to use uh, our ACI detailing checks, and uh, we'll first need to find our S, uh, B, our, our spacing between the bars, uh, which is equal to the, the maximum of uh, the diameter of a bar and one inch and uh, four thirds times aggregate size. Um, but Primarily, these two are what we'll use. So the diameter of our bar, 1.128, is uh, the maximum of the two. So this is um, our spacing, 1.128 inches. Um, the diameter of our bend for our stirrups is equal to 4 times the diameter of, a, of the stirrup. So 4 times 0.5 inches is two uh, inches. So then uh, we can plug in all, all these values into our expressions. So we'll have two times our cover plus two times the diameter of our stirrup uh, plus uh, the number of bars, which we have uh, two bars going across um, times dB. Uh, so db here is 1.128 plus uh, n minus 1, so 1 times 1.128, and we'll find this is equal to 7.4 inches. Uh, which is less than our BW of 12 inches, so our, our first check is okay. And then our second check, we have 2 times our cover. Uh, sorry, our cover is uh, 1.5 inches. Uh, plus 2 times the diameter of our stirrup. Plus 2 inches, the diameter of our bend plus n minus 1, so 1 times 1.128, plus n minus 1, so 1 times 1.128 again. Uh, and we'll find this equal to 8.3 inches, uh, which is still less than or equal to our 12 um, inches. So we're OK here as well. All right, so that concludes our, our design of our T-beam section. And here are the uh, final dimensions and details for our uh, final design.